The UK electricity grid will collapse if we all switch to EVs. It's already struggling. EVs will quickly finish it off. Well, we EV drivers often get upset when we see, hear or read someone who obviously does not like or drive an EV stating a reason why nobody should ever even consider buying an EV. Some of them are really quite ludicrous, but they gain traction. Others are just plain wrong. And they gain traction. Well, Dave takes it on, looks through the comments left by viewers and explores several of the really ridiculous examples to see which, if any, are true or, or even close. Well, just a quick observation. I do receive hundreds of comments and have noticed a trend where an obvious EV hater and non-EV driver makes a ridiculous comment it is almost lost amongst the larger number of owners who do drive EVs and who report their own experiences, which often state exactly the opposite, often including anecdotal proof. They stopped here and this was what happened. The first video in this series is about the national electricity grid in the UK. Scary stories about the grid collapsing with huge increase in demand, blackouts, price hikes and much more. So what does the grid say? What are the facts? Well, fact one, if we all owned an EV and we all returned home from work at peak time and all plugged in our EVs at the same time, then the current grid could not cope with either the total capacity or that total instant load. So there is some truth in this statement. However, is that scenario possible? Oh, no, absolutely not. Let me explain. If every single ICE car in the UK pulled into a petrol station all at exactly the same time and all wanted to fill up, then the petrol stations could not cope. This is not guesswork. We've all seen this with our own eyes in recent years when there are scares and people are panic buying, shutting down garages, massive miles long queues. Well, likewise, if all the people in the UK turned on all their electrical appliances and maxed out their 24 kilowatt available power supply to their homes, without any EVs even being plugged in, the grid still could not cope. Our grid last year produced about 325 terawatt hours. And remember, a single terawatt hour is 1 million kilowatt hours. So around 30 million homes all using the absolute maximum available to them, 24 kilowatts, that's roughly 100 amps, supply at 240 volts, the grid would need 720 terawatt hours, or exactly twice what we generated last year. And this fact shows up the first failure in these so-called facts about EVs. Yes, if all EVs plugged in, etc, etc, but they can't. And one of their other stupid claims is the reason why. That one is, well, there are not enough charging points in the UK to charge all the cars at once. <laughs> so their very own claims totally disprove their very own claims as utterly false. Do they not see this for themselves? Obviously not. So let's see what happened to all of that 325 terawatt hours of electricity that we did generate. Did we indeed run out? Have we had blackouts? Well, again, no, not in the last year, not for a long time. The reality is that UK consumption of electricity is falling rapidly and generating is growing even more rapidly, meaning that in 2022, we weren't able to use all the electricity we generated ourselves and actually exported a record amount. Well, fancy that. We already have more electricity than we can use, even with these supposed millions of EVs on the road collapsing the grid. So let's clear up fact number two. The total number of battery electric vehicles on our road this year is likely to end up just short of one million vehicles in total ever out of a total of 35 million cars on the road. That's not a flood, that's not millions. That's just 3% of total vehicles are battery electric vehicles. Tiny. Well, isn't it strange how the facts start getting in the way of good media headlines or myths? So let's keep going and look a bit deeper. 
the average UK mileage is 8,000. Yes, yeah, some, including me, do far more, but others do way less. The average, according to REC, AA and several other sources, is 8,000 miles. So, with 365 days in the year, the average motorist, motorist travels 22 miles each day. And the average EV drives about 3 miles on 1 kilowatt hour. And each car plugged in each night is only going to need about 8 kilowatt hours to top back up to full. Now, a simple domestic 13 amp plug provides 3 kilowatts, while a 350 kilowatt grid serve DC charger provides obviously up to 350 kilowatts. So each car needs to be plugged in for no longer than an hour, probably a lot less out of a total overnight of seven or eight hours between, say, 10 p.m. when electricity demands really starts to drop dramatically and 7 a.m. when demand suddenly peaks. Hard fact one. If every single ICE car owner tomorrow switched to an EV, then the grid would struggle if we all plugged in at peak time, but could cope easily if plugged in overnight. Is this fact likely? No, it is impossible. Our motor industry peaked at around 2 million cars being produced each year. And that's currently dropped to less than 750,000. Yeah, our car production is failing rapidly. How quickly could we build 35 million cars? Well, if we asked China and they supplied their entire annual output of EVs to the UK, it would still take well over two years. If we also took all of Europe's production and all of the USA production, it would still take well over a year. But of course, not every single car owner in the UK can afford to buy a brand new EV. In fact, is this not just another one of the oft-quoted myths? We cannot possibly afford to switch to EVs. They're too expensive. True. So this too is another impossible scenario. Most people buy used cars and spend around £10,000 on average. Most new EVs are currently around thirty to £40,000 on average. So we cannot simply switch to EVs tomorrow. If we build and buy two million each year, then we can sell all of those. That will begin to build a stock of used EVs in the future, as we generally only keep our cars less than four years. So after two years, some of the used EVs will begin entering the market, admittedly at a still very high price, but as each year goes by, the number increases and the price decreases. People who bought used low mileage EVs will sell them to get a later model, and so on and so on. The process is likely to take 10 to 20 years to work right through the entire system. In 10 years, the new EVs bought today will be way down in the one to £5,000 price range, affordable to almost all. And after 15 to 20 years, that price will be down in the hundreds, just like ICE cars today. Just have a look through Auto Trader. It has an absolute mass of 10, 15, 20 year old cars on sale for less than a thousand pounds. The same will apply to EVs in 10, 15, or 20 years. Okay, back to, but what about the electricity? Are we likely to be running short if we all buy an EV, new or used? Again, no. The facts do not support this. Electricity consumption in the UK is falling, that's official, and it's falling rather rapidly due to a number of things. Well, first we have the recent price rises uh, in our electricity bills, and those alone have just cut our consumption. As those price rocketed, so our demand reduced as we cut out unnecessary things, leaving TVs on when not in the room, switching to LED lights and even turning them off when they're not needed, buying energy efficient appliances when the old ones fail. Now, all these mean that the average person in the UK has reduced their electricity consumption by around 25% over the last decade, 4% down in the last year alone. Then the grid has increased its electricity production over the last decade by a massive increase in solar PV and wind farms, another huge increase in domestic solar PV systems on roofs. 
That is the reason why the grid is today exporting electricity to Europe and beyond. Over five times the amount we exported just last year, peaking at 20.8 terawatt hours. Just think about that. We exported on average about 5.3 terawatt hours over the year, but at peak times we are exporting far more than we can actually use. And the new generating installations are continuing to grow at an exponential pace. But in years to come, that will run out of steam. It's already showing the early signs. The latest sale of licenses for UK offshore wind farms produced no bids at all, no buyers. The sale totally flopped. Government was embarrassed. And a number of existing projects are also being studied as to whether or not they proceed. Put simply... The price of borrowing money has risen rapidly and there is already simply too much power being produced. So any time now or over the next five years, the switch will begin, transforming the grid from production to storage. Grid connected batteries are already being installed in huge numbers. We in the UK have Europe's largest grid connected battery storage farm up in the northeast, fully operational, making an absolute fortune in profit for the owners, and hundreds of others are already being built. Well, these today produce far larger profits for the operators than the generators are getting. Our laws and our inane government are trying to limit the price we, the consumer, pay by capping the price the grid pays for its electricity. Profit margins are slim. But at the moment, there's no cap on selling stored electricity. Well, we live in an ever-changing world. I just wish some of the negative influencers coming from self-appointed EV haters and also the headline-grabbing media would just look to the future, not try to destroy the past by using sensational populist clickbait headlines. Well, thanks for watching to the end. If you have enjoyed this video or learned from it, please subscribe. We are a small channel and it really makes a huge difference if our videos get shown to a wider audience. And if you can, please consider becoming a Patreon member to support us financially. Not only does it help us, but we offer fresh videos, data and opinions that we cannot do or are not available on YouTube. I'm Dave.